Kia ora Tefano, Joe Damon here. This week I'm going to do something quite different. I'm going to take you to a place that is very special to my heart, my hometown of Wanui Mata. I don't even want to say you're making me nervous, you're putting me on the spot. No, I can't do it. There was a car driving with another car on top of it, yeah. uh, believe it or not. So we wanted to know what's happened to you in Wanui Mata. So many of you have supported me for so long, that's obviously always meant the world to me. But you know, I'm just fucking funny all the time bro, like every day, name a day, name a time. You alone really deserve to know where I come from, learn about my community, see the places that I grew up being around. I hope you enjoy this week's video. Yo, um, you guys are gonna crack off at the setup I've got running on this. Basically, we um, were supposed to put out a video this weekend. Um, we're supposed to put out a video this weekend, but long story short, it didn't get approved. You'll see why it needed to go through an approval process. Now I just thought, since I'm not going to have a video to put up this Sunday, this would be the perfect time. I'm going to take you guys to my hometown, um, Wanuemata, which is like a small town in Lower Hutt City. How would you describe growing up in Wanui? Oh no, see, I don't know, bro. bro. Just, just like one sentence. <laughs> What you say, you're making me nervous. You're putting me on the spot. Nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. One word, one word. The hood. <laughs> the hood. Appreciate you, bro. You, Good to see you, Penny. Look, this place is rough as fuck. <laughs> uh, how do I even say this? When you're a community that doesn't have a lot and the people don't have a lot, there's a spectrum of that. And some of the spectrum makes the news. <laughs> so I was supposed to send it to my partner, but I sent it to his mum. Now, what was it of? <laughs> <laughs> Nipple clamps on and a collar, are they joined? I had a leash, yeah. And oh, I think I had some things tied around my body. <laughs> you got your sister in to take the photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, pre we're quite close. Can we guess where Megan's from? Yeah, let's have Thungaray. Gore. <laughs> I too am going to guess West Auckland. Oh, where are you I'm from? I'm from Wainui. Oh my <laughs> god! There was a car driving with another car on top of it, yeah. uh, believe it or not. So we wanted to know what's happened to you in Wainui Mata. And this was when you were at school? Yeah, about fifth form. They told me um, someone had some lunch for me at the office, so I went over and this chick's out there and her and this other chick grabbed me and chucked me in the car because they thought I was some other chick with red hair. It uh, gave me a crack, threw me in the back of the car, but um, <laughs> took me to some house. I convinced them it wasn't me, and so we had a smoke and we went back to school. <laughs> so you were stuck in traffic like this, the previous caller? Yeah. My stomach starts going, and like, when I've got to go, I've got to go. It's broad daylight. Sort of looking around, and I'm thinking, can I turn the car around? I couldn't just leave my car in traffic. This and then I just looked over in the passenger seat, and um, there was my son's lunchbox. And so, and so, Kirsty, did you yeah. um, oh. did you leave the car? Did you park the car yeah. and head into the bushes? And no, like, because I was stuck in traffic. So I pulled my pants down, shoved the lumps <laughs> under my ass, and yeah, just had to go for it. As I'm driving along. Oh, you didn't, you hadn't stopped the car. Oh, you were still, God, you're still driving. You're I'm an stuck animal. In traffic. You're an animal. But you didn't you even were, pull over. Are you from Johnsonville? <laughs> why no I Proud community though, a great place. Some of the great people have come out of Wainui. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love your silence. Oh, Daisy. So you get people that are in desperate situations, that are in shit situations, that are in, you know, sort of the toughest circumstances that you can kind of be in in a country like New Zealand. And sometimes that makes people do stupid shit. And I'm not making an excuse for it, but I guess when you talk about a place like this, it does tend to get a kind of reputation because of that sort of stuff. But that's why it has like such a strong sort of communal base. That's why the community really cares about itself and one another. That's why everyone's really close and tight knit because people don't really have a lot of their own shit. So, so how you meet people and how you get stuff done and how you do a lot is by sharing that around, doing that with others. Like me and my dad were always dropping off our lawnmower like, on the weekends, just to random people. Like, drop, when I say dropping off, my dad is the type of dude, like, he was always just mowing people's lawns. Like, I feel like that, that's one small example of what this place is like, of course, what my parents are like, but um, the community is just kind of like that. Uh, for, those of you, for those of you who follow me that aren't from New Zealand, basically a marae is like a 
communal kind of meeting. It's pretty central to like Māori and, and how we live. Everything kind of happens there, whether it's um, gatherings, yeah, funerals, celebrations. A lot of shit happens at the marae and it's a really, really important part of uh, our community. It made the news during COVID when a lot of like the sort of vaccine mandate shit was happening. Wanui was the first free vaccinations for the community out of the marae. I think it was the first one in the country. And because of that, when the protesters that were protesting at the occupation in parliament and uh, once they got driven off of parliament, they actually came the, that very day to Wanui to protest the marae because they were already upset about the fact that the government was mandating vaccines and so they were even more upset that a Māori community and a very proud Māori community at that um, like Wanui would allow quote unquote allow that to happen like within their own community but Wanui does not uh, give a fuck and what happened was they all started protesting and came over the hill a lot of the protesters have been real aggressive with the cops in town and stuff you know throwing bricks at them and shit setting shit on fire trying to do whatever they wanted to do here and the community blocked the roads they blocked the entry to the marae so that protesters couldn't come in and like fuck everything up. A convoy of protesters from Wellington that turned up at Kōkiri Marae on Wednesday before moving on to Wainui Omata Marae yesterday were met with a frosty reception. Locals put a call out on social media for extra protection and many gathered at the marae to deter the unwelcome visitors from staying. Everyone that was helping block up you know the roads and stuff for them to come in basically they tried to rough up a few people and people from Wainui started beating them up. <laughs> started beating up the protesters <laughs> which is fucking crack up so um <laughs> yeah when i say this is like a special place that are very like ride or die for their community and care a lot about their people like i really really mean that like i hope you guys can hear it but that's what it sounds like freaky fucking end of the world air horn this is my childhood house This is the backyard. Yeah, they are home. But now this is it. Up to you. Up to you. Baba and Landy here or nah? That guy's random, eh? Good to see you, dude. My parents, they've, they've just emptied out um, our family home that I grew up in in Wainu. And this is my bedroom. This is my bedroom growing up. This is how much I loved um, TV and film growing up and always wanted to be, you know, a TV and filmmaker. I used to treat this like wardrobe like my office and I'd have a desk set up here. Pretty much all I'd do is I'd make like these storyboards. So, look at this shit. From when I was, I would've been like young ass, like 12. And so here's me like storyboarding a fight scene. Um, you know, and this fucking little dude fucking up three dudes, you know, doing the whole thing. Uncle's got a mullet. Hey. Yeah, but my parents never took these down. How many bedrooms? One, two, three, four, four bedrooms. My middle brother Ethan was in this front room. My youngest brother Eli was kind of in the back. You can't really see. Me and my sister Grace were upstairs. We, we always had a lot of people staying at, at our house. They're taking cousins in who were kind of in the middle of stuff with their family or taking another family that maybe were from out of town or something. My, my parents are very, very generous people and uh, especially my mum, like generous in every single way. Generous to a fault, to be honest. Like they gave and gave a lot, which is why even though my parents had really good jobs and, and worked like a lot. To be honest, they, they didn't often have much because they gave a lot of it away. And that was kind of hard to watch as a kid, to be honest. Not because it had like any direct implication on us. Like the worst we had to do was, you know, share, which fucking like really, how bad is that? It's just hard to watch, you know, them kind of go through that and, and supporting like a lot of the people that they did in their life. Always had like random backpackers and shit at our house. To be honest, I'd be lying if I was, you know, Embarrassed to say, but I, I think I hated it as a kid because I never had my own space and, and I never had my own stuff. Like I was always having my stuff given away. But, you know, those, those are kind of like thoughts that you have as a kid because you, you don't understand really what, what's happening. So it's now as I look back as, as an adult and I get to really see like how amazing my mum and dad were for, for being, for wanting to be there, for consistently being there for, for so many people. And I guess, um, there's always been ways that I've wanted to emulate that. I'll always be super grateful to them for that. But uh, it's it's so cool to think about like what I'm able to do now. And you know, I've 
worked in TV and film for like five years now and been able to make my own stuff and work in every part of the process, writing, producing, directing, acting. You see like how passionate about it I was as a kid and kind of where I grew up, that you understand like how much that means to me and I guess it's why I talk about it like how grateful I am for these things a lot. It's not even like I wanted it so badly. I loved it so much, I never even thought it was possible to do it. So now that I have the chance, even after like five years probably being well known within the space, but then like 10 years pursuing it, I'd say, you never get used to it, ever. If you watch my even just my social media content, there's always sort of a produced, written and directed sort of element. Especially with the mockumentaries, like I love shooting those. And I love it so much, I do them in the smallest ways in that way. And you know, obviously like you've seen today, like with not only what I've done, but what I want to do, like I want to do it in the biggest ways too. How great a blessing to have been able to, to know that from such a young age. I'll always be grateful to stand up in comedy for allowing me that opportunity. i show you this place. This is the famous Wanui BP that I'm showing you. Back when like people were ram raiding and shit like all over the country, it was a whole epidemic. There was a whole thing about it. There was a construction site and a dude stole one of the diggers and then ram raided that BP and um, tried to scoop the ATM out of the BP with a digger. <laughs> the whole thing, like it was on the news and shit. And that was actually a few years ago and I, I talk about it in my stand up. We were the first and only place where the BP got ram raided with a digger. <laughs> Favourite part is there's this Facebook group called Nui Nera. Someone posted the article, they were like, who knows who did this? And everyone was commenting on it, tagging the bro. <laughs> I don't know if you can really see much. So I used to walk down to here on the weekends and practice kicking. So this is crazy. You have to bring the shoe off. If you are from New Zealand, you know who Dan Carter is. Goodness gracious. <laughs> it's crazy that like, I actually know DC now. Not to like, be that guy. But <laughs> it was a main event then got to catch up with um, my best friend Dan Carter afterwards. <laughs> oh, how good. <laughs> Look at that, this conversation. Natural and organic. I'd be here all weekend, just like practicing kicking for absolutely no reason because I played in the front row. Fuck, he still got it. So this dairy here. <laughs> Primary school would get off at three. And I think these guys down the end would get off at three as well. You know, it was too many kids all at once. Everyone would kind of walk down through here and just all types of shit would happen here. I don't always want to say fights. All kinds of shit, smoking ciggies. I remember my best mate, I walked past and he was drinking a vodka cruiser. Um, you know, just shit you do when you're 12 years old in small town NZ. Um, Hey, what's up? How are you? What's up, bro? How are you? Gee, too. Not too much. Bro, do your family still live near us? Yeah? I've got to quickly have this um, catch up with a producer. So I got time to be on the more creative side Sick. while the business stuff is happening. I've been really lucky to go over to America and be able to, you know, pitch projects and come up with film and television ideas that have the potential to get made. Yeah, so I've got one that's been picked up by a producer in the US. So this is when you get to the top of the hill. That's what you see. That obviously is a place that's quite sentimental to me. It made me who I am, gave me everything I have in my life. And uh, I'll always be super, super grateful to not only the community of Wanui, but the people that still show me so much love and always have. I think that's why I always kind of uh, kept it to myself and didn't really talk about it as much. And this is probably the most stuff I've ever revealed of it, talked about it. And it actually felt, feels really, really good, so. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. I know it's very different, um, but if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please let me know. Otherwise, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Comment below what, what you want to see me do next. If there's anything that you've seen me do so far that you really particularly enjoyed, whether that was the cooking stuff, training stuff, music stuff, please let me know. We'll do more of it. Otherwise, if there's anything that you want to see me try, do anyone you want to see me meet, please comment below. Thank you so much for watching this week. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I've been Joe Damon. Good to see you. <laughs>